All right, we are back. Welcome back to the Hammer Time Rackets podcast. I'm your host yet again, Pete Cipriano. Back with me today are Ben Costin, not Tom Cowstone, and Ed Hyde, big Ed Hyde. Welcome, boys. Evening, Sip. Evening, Sip. It's very, very much the evening in the UK. We're recording this at 5.15 p.m. my time, so very late for these boys. They'll be going straight to bed, I hope, after uh, after we finish up this this iteration of the Hammer Time podcast. Um, why don't we get right into it? We're going to try to cover uh, the last what we believe to be the last 11 courts in the UK, which we did not cover um, on our last uh, court description podcast um, several pods ago. Um, so why don't we uh, why don't we kick it off with something that I know, and then I guess I'll shut up for the rest of the uh, the pod. Manchester. Um, I I think Manchester is a great court. It looks like a not great court just visually from all the the water damage on the walls or the calcification, I guess you would call it, and on the floor. It obviously had issues with uh, with the the roof in the past. Um, and let me see here. And I'd say about um, just the way the court plays definitely is slower than most of the courts in the US. Um, the walls are a little bit slick as is the floor, but it's very, very true. Um, you know, we've had the unfortunate, um, I guess, experience of having some issues with the balls more than the court when we've played there and the gold rackets the last couple of years. Um, but for the most part, great court, great club, great membership, um, and some very good matches have, have occurred there over the past couple of years in both the, uh, the qualifying um, for the world championship between Dunners and, and Hoppy. Um, and then I think, Ben, you, I guess you had lost to Duncliffe in the finals of the gold racket, but prior to that had had a, a Donnie Brook with Will Hopton. Was that the same year or was um, the year before? No, year before. I did not I did have had a five, five gamer with Christian, right? Which was yeah, a, I had a five gamer with Christian that day. Down to love. Um, yeah. Possibly, was it, did he have match ball in that game? I think he got to 13. It, it, he definitely got to 13. And I think I went no set, so he, he might he might have done it 14, 13. A very ballsy move by the young Costin. <laughs> um, seems to have worked out in your favor on a couple of couple of occasions. So um, I'm interested to hear your guys' take. Heidi, why do you go first? Um, I agree with a lot of what he said. We're quite a slick court. Um, occasionally get the odds inconsistent bounce where the ball flies over your head, um, but very rarely. Um, and I guess it'd just be good to mention the the gold racket, which we've all been to and, and played in. Um, that's a great, it's a great weekend. Um, some rackets, some real tennis, decent dinner on the Saturday night. Um, and then Sunday morning is always interesting. Uh, but yeah, I always enjoy going up there. Um, it's a great club with great members. Um, yeah. Buddy. Uh yeah, I was going gold rackets, great weekend. Heidi, we we had a had a nice battle at about eight AM or something one one time on a Sunday morning. And I, I think I had to wake you up from the club where you uh spent the night. I slept uh, in the club that night, yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I, I think it's a great sport. Like as Heidi said, pure bounces, but it's pretty true. It's it's quite slow. I find it quite hard to serve there. I mean, personally, I like to serve a lot of sort of forehand from the right there, backhand from the left, just mix it up as much as you can. Um, as Sit mentioned, had that great doubles match. And I, I really like playing doubles on that court. It's probably my favourite court to play doubles on, just because it, it's quite slow, which can often mean like it, not too many lets, and not too much stuff happening around the back. And also, it's, I think the side walls are quite shiny. So um, it doesn't again come in the middle too much quite easy to take off off the walls and i just i really like playing doubles on it and again singles is, you know rallies for forever i mean playing hopped in that that one time i think we missed the whole kind of dinner that night it's just 
Yeah, on bag. I was refereeing that. I had to wait until <laughs> about 10 o'clock at night to, uh, to eat. Um, yeah, for whatever reason, the ball, just the angles and doubles, um, it comes off perfectly. But then I would say also in singles, it rewards hard hitting down the walls. Um, so a guy like Duncliffe, I just, for whatever reason, I, I picture him hitting like a ton of straight balls, hard and straight. Yeah. Um, you know, the, it, it, for whatever, I guess the court just takes that type of spin from the ball and keeps it tight. Um, so in singles, I think if you play up and down the walls a lot more, instead of hitting boasts, which the ball sort of sit up in singles, yeah. a lot. Um, whereas in doubles, obviously it's, it's slow. So you can have good rallies and, and play a lot of good angles. Um, and again, it like, it takes, takes the ball. It's like a very true court. Um, moving on, let's go to rugby. I've been there. So I'm cool. interested, I guess, Heidi, why don't we start with you? Rugby. Rugby. Um, yeah. Fond memories of rugby. It was always uh, the best away day uh, as a schoolboy because it was miles away from, from the South of England. And it, so it took up a whole day of school. Uh, missed all the lessons, got on the train um, to Euston and then up to rugby. Um, stop off at Burger King on the way and the way back. Um, but yeah, two courts. Uh, one is um, really cold and a bit more exposed to, to the elements and outside. Um, the other one less so. Um, but it's always a fun day as a schoolboy because you've got loads of rackets um, played more than one match, um, lunch and dinner. Um, can't really complain. Um, I, I've never been to rugby, but I just, the one thing that stands out to me is that second court, which has the, which is, has the singles court built into the doubles court. Um, and that, I mean, I've only seen pictures, but you can see the sort of, at the top, they only built the singles court about three quarters of the way up. Um, so you've still got the ex kind of walls of the double score. I mean, Heidi can probably elaborate more having been there, but it seems to sort of angle, angle towards the uh, towards the outer wall, I guess. Yeah, you're right. It's a bit yeah, it's a bit weird um, the way the course structures. But you don't really, I, I don't really, really think it affects too much as like a 15, 16 year old um, too badly. But yeah, it is a bit is a bit unusual compared to other courts. Um, I can't really remember too much uh, with regards to how the how the courts play. Nothing like springs to mind. Nothing like St Paul's. Um, nothing too extreme. Um, yeah, I think it's just uh, it's a good place to play rackets as a schoolboy when you're learning the game, um, and it's a it's a good day out for most for most schoolboys as well because it's just a bit further away. I believe the great Guy Devereaux is a graduate. I think he's a rugby old boy, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So one of the first guys I ever partnered with um, who sort of turned me on to the game. I wonder if it's a server's court because he has an absolute hammer for a, a left-handed <laughs> serve. They always, um, they always put a good showing up in the Noel Bruce as well, rugby. Um, yeah. Yeah. Always, get a few, always get a few pairs out. Um, Louis Wynn Stanley, I think, um, is responsible for that more recently. To win um, the evening, not the tournament necessarily, but it'll always put out a good showing one way or another. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> uh, moving on to Malvern. I, I've never played there, but I've ref quite a lot of sort of ladies British Open doubles. I think to play there every year, and I've ref that once. Um, and I've left a school match there. It just looks really severe. Um, I highly would have played on it, but it just, I, I mean, I remember Freddie Bristow there when he was a schoolboy. Uh, he was a very good player, but we played at Wellington. We played a good moving pair, and I think Freddie served to about, he won the first sort of 15 love um, and then got to about 10 love without a sort of, you know, straight in one hand against a good pair. So that, I think that just kind of shows how severe the court court is there really um, yeah 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 you're spot on spot on Benny um, I only played there I think once uh, just again because it was it was miles away from from school at Tunbridge um, but yeah it's pretty severe um, quite bright courts from from memory yeah. um, and also situated in a really nice part of the of the school there 
Um, but yeah, quite quick and severe, severe is what, what, what strikes me. Uh, but yeah, my memory is a bit hazy on that. Yeah, I mean, there, there's two of them and I think they're pretty similar. I mean, I spoke to Tom Bonford this week about them um, and he said with the sort of wound balls, it's completely different. Like, there's much more rallies. But obviously, we sort of mostly use plastic, the solid plastic ones and um, they just seem to die because it's quite a cold building as well. So I don't think they ever warm up, which might, might be an issue. Um, I would say it's a great gallery there. Like we we fit in loads for the British Open final, the ladies. Like quite big, quite steep. Um, this was the, la the last Open final where Tara and who won? Uh, Tara and Georgie Willis won um, against the Wellington schoolgirl pairing of Izzy Forney Croft and Lauren Gidding. I believe it, it was, and it was it was sort of eighteen seventeen in the fifth type thing. Um, absolutely epic final. Was that the, was it the semi final where they beat Leah and her partner? Um, um, I don't think I don't think yeah. Leah. Played. It might have been the British Open. Or something I think like she that. played out. No, it's World Championship where um, that's right. Tara, the final Tara and India Deacon beat Leah um, and her partner uh, Louisa Saint. Louisa looked to be about fourteen years old. Like, I don't know how old she is, but she was. Uh, um, she was a little, yeah, little girl. Um, moving on to Cheltenham. I've not been there, but obviously having a coach who's uh, who's come from there, spoken a ton with Briars and all the other Cheltenham boys, Rich Allen, Duncliffe, Nick James. Um, you know, I, all I've heard is that I would have a really hard time there because I guess it doesn't take the serve very well. Um, tends to foul cut a lot. I think Ben... You probably have had that issue there, I assume. Going there, I used to be fairly frequently to train with Duncliffe not too long yeah. ago, right? Yeah, I've been there. I've been there quite a lot to train with Duncliffe, uh, several Cheltenham gold rackets as well. Um, and I must say, I cannot serve better at all. I mean, the, the more I try and stop it foul cutting, the more I seem to foul cut it. Um, but I don't really think anyone can serve better. Um, probably the quickest court in England, I'd say. Which, I mean, for sure, as far as I'm aware. Front wall especially is really quick. I mean, I, I'm, I get quite scared, actually, playing doubles quite high on that court. Um, but, the, I mean, once it hits the floor, I think the floor's a bit slower, so it kind of slows down. And in singles, you don't really notice when you're a bit deeper. Um, the back wall is super friendly. It never comes down at all. Um, so, yeah, impossible, well, impossible, really, to get runs to serve. And you can just retrieve. It's very true. It's just um very bouncy, I guess, what I'd say about it, really. Yeah, I think it's um it's always a good place to play as a youngster because um you never went there thinking oh, I was going to get served off the court, and you knew you'd get a few, you'd have a few good rallies. Um, so yeah, I always enjoyed playing there, and it's always great to um to see to see Mark Bryers, um, and it was Carl Cook who was. Uh, master in charge, I think, until recently. Um, and it was always good fun seeing those guys. We played them first fixture of the season, so it was always in September, so it was always absolute carnage. Um, no one could really hit a ball. Um, but yeah, great day out at Cheltenham. One of the interesting things from, from the perspective of the coaching, um, Briars has produced so many like top, top level players in singles and doubles, but none of them seem to have the same technique so they're all, they, he all just sort of lets, it seem, seems like they just probably go there, play a ton. He lets them do, like hit the ball however they feel like hitting it. And he just helps mold there and sort of slightly, I guess, put, point, to wind them up and point them in the right direction. Um, but he's, he's been, an, I guess, an incredible coach and in, in the amount of success mm -hmm. that his players have had both in, yeah. the, in the school yeah. ranks and then afterwards. Yeah, I, I think... think um, yeah, you can go on, Heidi. I think, yeah, I think um, just what Pete said there, the number of players they produced um, for a single court school is pretty remarkable. Um, not just like the quality of players they produced, but there are a lot of um, Cheltenham Rackets players post-school that carry on playing. Um, and for a, for a school that only has one court, um, that's, that's pretty impressive. They always have north of 10 
10 pairs and a null Bruce. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, yeah, we should highlight that in particular and say, uh, say well done to Mark and, and Carl and the, and whoever's responsible for that at Cheltenham. Pushing the girls game as well, I believe. Yeah, and absolutely. Again. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to just mention about SIP's going to point how they all play differently. I mean, Cheltenham's one of those schools where it's not like they're not specifically cricketers, maybe like at Tunbridge or like when you look at sort of their top players, like Rich Owens, a tennis player, Stout's a squash player. Um, and they've got plenty of like plenty of cricketers as well. I mean, so they just have a mix of sports, I guess. Um, where some schools like Wellington are quite squash based and Tunbridge are quite cricket based. So I think that kind of creates slightly different players. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, moving on to Clifton College. Oh. Hi, did you want to go first? I've got very many fond memories of Clifton. Um, I've played at Clifton a couple of times. I actually played there in a in a match for the Jesters against Clifton Boasters, um, like in an evening fixture, which was really pleasant. Um, I can't actually remember too much about the court because I think I was playing against Tommy Shields and James Blackburn, maybe. I think it was a few years ago. Um, and we were just bashing a ball around. Um, but yeah, I don't, I can't really remember too much about it. All I remember is it's in the middle of the sports centre and it's all quite sort of narrow and congested. Um, yeah, but I, my memory is very hazy on what the course actually like. Um, yeah, I mean, I play, I play in the Clifton Cup every year, which is definitely one of my favourite weekends of the year. Um, it's a lot of fun, always doubles and some sort of rapey rackets on a Sunday morning. It's always, always pleasant playing Bailey with a couple of hours of sleep. Um, but I would say it's just really slow and bouncy, I guess. Um, really, really slow. I mean, I can't think of a slower court. Um, but it also bounces really high, so it's hard to hit the short angle for a winner. So there's just not many ways of winning a point. I mean, the, we always joke every every year we're there, but the, the back ball sort of angled upwards like a penthouse because whatever you do, it just it just seems to pop up. However much cut and however sort of however much rip you put into the corner, it will just pop up. Um, so it, it is literally a squash match, um, sort of every time. It suits me in a way, so I, I don't complain too much. I think I think uh, Clifton has. Uh pretty strong links to the, the cricket there, doesn't it? I think the majority of rackets players are in the are in the cricket team. Um that seems to be what happens. Yeah. I mean Matt there. was a cricketer, if you know Matt Windows, he's probably yeah. one of the greatest kind of schoolboy rackets players. Um and he went to Clifton double Foster Cup winner and uh yeah plenty more but shout out to him. Um moving on to Sandhurst. I don't think have you been, you haven't been I, there, Ben. I I've not been there. Hi, do on you. This is all me. Um, I played at Sandhurst in oh, March or April 2017 in the Sandhurst Cup, um, which is a bit were of an you, expedition. Were you the, the only non-service member playing in that, or what? No, no, no. That was um, it was basically just a load of Queens members with a few of the few guys from the army. Um, yeah, and it was a bit of an expedition, as I said. Got the train down, uh, like had to get checked in on arrival. Uh, got to the court, it's in the middle of San the Sandhurst estate. Um, just this <laughs> racket's court sort of plopped in the middle of it. Um, and the court, I guess, like there's no full time pro or anything. I'm not sure how much racket's actually played there. So, as to be expected, the court was a little unpredictable, um, and wasn't in the greatest of graces of shapes but it was fine we played we played a whole day's worth of rackets from like 9 a.m till till six in the evening um no major issues um in the, like, the building is in the middle of like the playing field so it is pretty cold uh that's what i remember um and it takes the serve takes the serve pretty well so if you get some cuts and rip into the serve um you're on to a winner really um so yeah, and then um, I'm not sure if it's still going to Sandhurst Cup, um, but there's a decent dinner afterwards in like uh, one of the main buildings there. So you get in the black in your black tie, 
Um, it's all very entertaining. Um, yeah, I think uh, so I, that tournament I actually won um, with Alex Rosier Pamphlin. Um, Legend. Which was which was good fun, uh, but it's um, it's it's like the Can Am. It's on the buzzer um, doubles tournament, so you just got to try and rack up as many points as possible. Stressful. That's very stressful. Yeah, yeah that would stress up too much. So uh, we decided we decided to be completely cutthroat and savage throughout the whole day and try and rack up as many points as possible. So we were running between between like getting a ball at the front of the court to each service box and just like trying to hammer the serve in. Um, which works Mate. sometimes. <laughs> Makey would have loved that. He's talked yeah, talk so, that weekend. So it's a bit, it's an interesting format. It's like racket, you're just like rushing around, trying to, like, there was one match, I think like 15 minute matches, and one score was like 87 9 or something like that, Ridic- something mm-hmm. ridiculous like that. It's like a cricket score. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's an it, it, interesting tournament to play, and I hope it's still going on. I haven't, I haven't been back since. Um, Bringing us to Wellington. Ben, why don't we start with you? You probably have some interesting uh, insight into that court and the group that's there. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I obviously worked there last year, hit a lot of rackets balls there. Um, I, I mean, it's quite a nice court. It's a, it's a bit quirky in a way that some of the balls out the corners come out, sort of some pop up a bit at you, some seem to come down. Um, well, that might just be me not reading it very well. Um, the serving I found tough. Like some people managed to serve quite well and get it to come down. Like I, I think sort of from the left, if you wrap around it quite a lot, you can keep it down. Um, but me, I like I go through it and under it a bit, so I kept foul cutting it. Um, so I really struggled serving there, um, which was a bit annoying. But the floor is quite quick. For sort of UK court feels feels a bit like Queens actually in a way off the floor and the side balls, um, but I think bounces up a bit higher rather than skid through. But sim- similar kind of pace, I think. Um, yeah, that's about what I'd say. Gallery is a bit quirky because there's that massive kind of space behind it, which I think used to be a bar. So it's just the gallery is kind of a room, but there's no sort of seating or it doesn't steep up upwards in a way it's literally just sort of one row at the front um like looking through a few windows um but then again there's a massive space behind which could fit sort of a hundred plus people um which is a bit quirky i guess yeah yeah i I think um yeah i had some absolute titanic battles there as a schoolboy um and yeah, you're right. I'm some some like I actually got hit in the back of the head there. Um, coming back from a service box, having served a serve with a load of foul cut on. Um, Lewis Simmons, because uh, he nearly got me in the back of the head once there. He was playing. I think it was his partner. <laughs> um, got me, and uh, I was it was man down for a bit. Um, but yeah, it was good. Um, good court to play on. I think um, wasn't your typical court. Quite quick. Um, and the Wellington pair is always pretty competitive, so it's a good day's rackets. Um, also, the I know some feedback from the last episode on the courts. People like the comments about the sort of day out and the food and beverage part of it. And uh, the canteen, the canteen at Wellington is pretty is pretty cool. It's massive. Yeah. Uh, you can get lot. You get lost very easily. Um, but the, the the like selection of food is is unbelievable. Um, and then, as you said, that space at the back of the gallery, um, there's always some some nibbles, some crisps going around. Uh, it would have suited James Coyne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so crack it, cracking place to go and play. Um, yeah, no complaints. And always good to see, to see Ryan Tully. And I want to say they usually have a pretty decent pair or two in Noel Bruce, do they not? They they do indeed. They've always Croft. got. A, they could have two, I guess. If yeah. uh, Bristow, is, Bristow now, uh, yeah, he's in the UK. Yeah, already Tim Cockrell, Freddie Bristow. That's a pretty good four they got going. Four songs, Who's in the right? first pair there? Yeah, it could could be interesting. I I always enjoy the Hopcroft and Coiny chats. Having played them, I think three years in a row. 
that, I'm, sure that, they, I'm sure they get along well on court. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, Corny definitely uh, takes the first string and the uh, adult kind of role in the partnership. <laughs> At least someone does. Um, <laughs> Marlboro. <laughs> Hardy, oh. you want to go? I ask you, memories. Um, have you been? Oh, yeah, you go, Dad. You go. I'm trying to figure out what the court's like. Oh, it's, it's, court, court, court one is a is a great court. I mean, I we did that sort of survey um, briefly, and every basically everyone from the UK courts and Mulgrew is their favourite court. I mean, Mike Bailey specifically seemed to really enjoy it. Um, but it's just a great true court kind of looks quite old I guess it's got red floor but it looks kind of like not very shiny and quite rough like quite old and the board sort of chipping away and almost brown now but it I just really like it very true quite slow you can serve a bit um you can get it to come down uh, I don't think it really ever foul cuts I mean the best serve there's the one which is quite short instead of the length so if it, the one that kind of just creeps over the service line, it's really effective there. Um, it, it's just really nice, I guess. Side balls are true. Uh, I've played, I played lots of school matches there, um, and then recently the invitational qualifying. Um, I remember sort of straight out of school, I managed to beat um, Nick Hopcroft twice that weekend, so that was um, quite memorable for me. Um, I'm sure he'll say. Uh, he had, he had a few things, a few distractions, but um, I'll, I'll take it. remind us of, of the uh, the Queen's matches too, I think, probably. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, Heidi, oh, yeah, day, my favourite sort of day out, actually. I, I didn't do as many as Heidi, but Mulgrew had a great canteen, great food. Um, they, had, they had sort of hot chocolate on tap, which... I was I was a fan of. Yeah, that was always that was always a highlight, and I'm not sure whether it's still there, but they always had a cracking sofa to sit on as well, um, just behind yeah. the courts. I think that was the comfiest sofa uh, in any rackets club in the world. Um, that's what stands out for me. That's um, very important. That's a very important uh, piece of information for all the fans. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's good that um, tournaments are sort of pushed away uh, from Queens every now and then, and the the qualifiers, the invitation singles. I think that's that's a good thing to have those tournaments um, at slightly sort of um, far, you know, schools that aren't in that sort of London London area. Um, I think it's good for the game. It enables the pupils at those schools to see some rackets that they wouldn't normally see, some adult rackets. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm all for tournaments like that being being pushed away from Queens as long as people are keen to travel. Interesting yeah. take. I should yeah. sure that you had some detractors on that statement. <laughs> I mean, there's a second call, which I guess we haven't mentioned, but I, I only played on it once, maybe. Uh, I can't remember who against. Maybe Tommy Pro, but some, someone like that. Um, and it was a bit quirky. It was, it was quite slow, but I just remember off the, sort of, off the serve, it would come so wide. Um, just ev every time, kind of just come right across you. Um, a bit like Sipul's, I guess, but not. it wasn't severe. It quite came up, but just really wide. Um, so... It definitely doesn't get used as much as the the other one. Um, cool. Uh, we've got three more. If we get through the last three quickly, I wanted to ask a couple of questions just off the cuff that I thought of. Um, so Winchester being the last one, I think that all that you guys have played on, and the last two are Dartmouth and Seacourt. Um, so why don't we give Winchester uh, its its due? And then we'll we'll read through. Oh, do you start? No, I'll, I'll finish up one. Yeah, you can you can correct me, given that you've grown up there. Um, that was one of my favorite favorite trips was to was to Winchester. Um, two courts, both pretty similar, Ben. I'd say, or not? Yeah, yeah pretty similar. Both pretty, both pretty similar. Um, ben will elaborate more on the 
more on the how the court plays given given his experience there. Um, but the court's situated in sort of you know the center central part of the school, more or less, um, really picturesque. Um, and my favorite memories of Winchester, we uh, used to go for lunch, um, and I always ended up going into college, I think it's called, yeah. uh, which is the scholars dining room, um, which is really old, probably the eldest building in the college, in the middle of the college where the scholars dine, um, old wooden benches and chairs, and he'd rock up uh, as an away rackets team, sit with the scholars, which was quite intimidating. Um, and then when they're finished with their food or they need to get some some drink or whatever, they just stand up and walk straight across the t- straight across the tables, um, just like over your plate and like down beside you. It's incredible. Uh, very old fashioned. Someone playing a piano in the background. It's lovely. Um, so, yeah, in, in terms of like public school boys sort of racket circuit slash fixture, that is as classic as you get. Um, and it's always always one where you wanted to be selected for Um, yeah but over to you Ben about the actual rackets Um, yeah yeah I mean I have all those fond memories as well as well as uh, the tuck shop just nearby has got very nice plushies um, which seems to be a favourite from away teams Um, the courts uh, completely unbiased opinion best racket courts in the world um <laughs> as Heidi mentioned the other day Tunbridge maybe but um <laughs> right the right court which is court two um which used to be sort of the secondary court uh, apparently when my dad when they swapped them over um as a sort of show court and the kind of second pair of court it's the right court's a bit more I mean I'm going to say a bit more severe uh, still very friendly um, they're very friendly, um, quite slow. I'm trying to think what's... There's not many kind of defining characteristics about it, really. Red, uh, red floor, it comes out It comes out quite wide these days. I'm not sure if that's... I mean, that might be the rules. Um, I mean, if you ask anyone, they say it's impossible to serve there. But I think after seven years of practising now, I've finally cracked it. Um but it, but it is quite tough. I'm not. I'm not going to spill any secrets because uh, I think I'm the only one in the world that can serve there at the moment. Yeah, Christian had mentioned that it was difficult court to serve on. I should mention also, obviously, the reigning Noel Bruce champions, Christian and Mike Bailey, uh, out of Winchester. Yeah. Coached by the great Tim Coston. Um, <laughs> Dartmouth. I think Ed, have you played there? No. Or is this one of the only? And, and has anyone played C court? Uh, I've played Sea Court quite a lot. Um, have you? I thought that they I don't have. they don't get much play there. I know it's like they used as a badminton court primarily. Uh, yeah, uh, sort of paddle, badminton, dance studio, what what tragic. kind of anything huh. really. But it it does get used occasionally. Um, but I mean it it's it's a tough court. It looks like it's in <laughs> rough shape on the floor, maybe in the pictures. I've seen. Yeah, well, uh, uh, what Willie Surtees mentioned the other day, and it was spot on, is the side walls are so rough that the ball just grips on it. Um, if you ever hit, if you ever hit the boast in the wall, it will grip on the first one. You can almost visibly see it hold, and then it will shoot across. So if you hit this forehand boast, it will go side wall, and it will almost hit the left side wall before the front wall because um, it grips that much. Um, so sort of playing doubles on it is sort of, it's hopeless really. It just, everything's in the middle, sort of short double dose kind of thing. Um, returning serve again, because it grips on the side wall, just comes straight sideways out at you, um, which, which is nasty. But if if you don't use the side wall, it's the back wall, the floor and the front wall, all fine. Um, Easy. So you, you just got to sort of play like um, like squash drills up and down the wall. And then, then you're fine. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd, they, I don't know. They could probably maybe sand it, like Certes was mentioning. But Get the diamond I, disc sander that we were mentioning pre uh, pre podcast that they were planning on using at St Paul's, but never did because of the uh, unnecessary expense. That's for all you uh, members of Seacourt. Um, <laughs> Dartmouth, no one's played on. I don't know anything about it. We'll skip it. If 
any of our giant group yeah. of fans have any uh, oh. any any insight oh. as to the Dartmouth court, we'll be interested to hear it. I'm going to say um one quirky fact about Dartmouth is well, it's quite it's probably the quirkiest court because there's actually two courts, um, and they're back to back, which is uh, the only court. I don't think I've ever seen that in any racket sports. And there's only one in use at the moment, the other's climbing wall. But apparently um, they didn't have netting in between. So if you got the hammer served wrong or something, it would just fly into the next court. <laughs> Safe. Um, so that's really quirky. Um, and the door, the door is also half the size of the normal door. Um, I mean, Ben Bomb could send me a picture of um, him standing next to him. He's, he's quite a short man and it's sort of halfway up on him. So <laughs> you're kind of having to crawl out the door which is another quirky feature. <laughs> Court for hobbits. Um, so the question that I came up with, and I haven't actually thought about my own answer, um, but I'd like to hear your guys' answer off the cuff. If you were playing in a world championship singles match, where in the U.S. would you pick as your U.S. leg and where in the U.K. would you pick as your U.K. leg? And same question for doubles. Ben, since you're the most likely of the three of us to actually play in a singles or doubles world championship match, unless I'm able to convince James Stout to physically carry me uh, in a couple more opens, why don't we hear from you first? Um, I mean, it, there's so many factors that come into it, I guess. It's sort of like who you're playing, what's going on. I mean, You've I might got the say... choice. Forget, forget your opponents. Favorite court in the U.S. to and well, that my, you pick my, that you play the best on, and favorite court in the U.K. that you play the best on. Well, I'm, I might have to say Chicago purely because not many other people seem to play well on it. Um, yeah. it's, it's, I can't say I play particularly well there. Um, especially double, doubles, I'd definitely pick Chicago actually because um, <clears> I've had a lot of good results there. S singles, I might go actually tuxedo. Um, court. yeah which I quite, I quite like tuxedo I, I mean I haven't played New York I quite like to play in front of a big gallery so I might I might say New York because because of that um but yeah UK um singles would be Radley for sure um even though only about 15 people could watch um I I'd back myself there against most people uh can serve quite well there just play quite well. Um, doubles would probably be either Manchester or Winchester, I guess. Um, Interesting be... choice. Heidi, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah. That's one of the most unlikely scenarios ever that I'd be playing in a Rackets uh, World Championship, but but we can dream. Um, I think, in, let's do America first. I think for singles, I'd pick Chicago second court. Um, purely on the fact that it takes the serve quite well and I would take massive confidence in the fact that I beat Marty Kinsella there um, um, in, in one match where there was quite a lot of chat and uh, pride riding on it um, so I'd say I'd say that one and then for Very doubles cool. I probably yeah, um, playing there with the, with the black balls um, yeah. after about five points you can't see the ball um, doubles I'd say tuxedo um, I just think it's quite a good I, I enjoyed playing the tuxedo gold racket there and doubles um, with Lucas Garvin I think um, shout out to that um, and it's got a good gallery so potential for a bit of um, sort of um, crowd get the crowd involved and then I think that Ben's probably already guessed what I'm going to say for the UK for both singles and doubles. I'd pick Tunbridge Red, um, just on the fact that I think anyone not from Tunbridge would be shocked by the speed and the colour and the fact that it's like an ice rink because Makey never cleans it um, and he allows all the schoolboys to play in their shoes. Um, and yeah, I just um, I'm not very big. I'm not very strong. I'm uh, not very powerful, um, but I reckon, but I reckon I could sort of mop up at the back of the court because it doesn't cut down, 
Um, so it'd be a battle, battle of the lungs. I reckon I'd, I'd have the I'd have the fitness over most people in the rackets world. Um, so yeah, Tambridge Tambridge Red, Tambridge Red. If I had a home leg in either singles or doubles world championship matches, sit cerebral, well thought out answer from Hyde. Um, I had not, as I said, didn't think of of this until midway through the the pod. I would say for singles, just for me, I would pick Detroit or New York. Um, if I'm not playing a guy like James Coyne, I would pick Detroit or Richard Owen, like a guy who's not a ridiculously good server. Um, I would pick Detroit for reasons, I mean, obvious reasons, like I'm, I'm not the, the greatest server in the world, but it takes a serve really well. And I felt like, a, you know, it's slow, severe, but true. Um, and I've always felt like I played well there. Um, and then obviously New York being my home club, the truest, pretty fast, bouncy, rewards good shots, rewards good serving. You can roll the ball out, but you know, you're not going to get blown off the court um, with serves and stuff like that. And, it, you know, it encourages rallying. Um, and in the UK, I would say for doubles, I would pick Manchester. As we said earlier, I think it's just a really good court for, for doubles. It's a little bit slower. I mean, depending on the ball that you get, um, but if the ball stays up, bounces, it's easy to get the serve back for the most part. Um, and again, it promotes rallying. And for singles, since I haven't played on many of the courts, I would just, uh, I'd probably want to go and play at Eaton just for the, like the historic, um, uh, like nature of the court. And from what I've heard from a few people, um, but that's just me. Um, we are closing in, I think, on 50 minutes here. So the last bit, um, we've got Willie Boone lined up for Thursday. I think Hyde is going to take the actual interviewing responsibilities because I, I don't want to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, so it's all on you. I might actually wake up to turn on the, uh, the Zoom recording, but Hyde's going to handle. Um, and then we've got I guess John Pren will have after, then Mail, um, and then <sighs> Neil. Um, but I think we're going to probably start um, interspersing other types of conversations and and um, topics in between each of those interviews because we don't want to inundate people with asking uh, former world champions the exact same questions over and over again. Um, so with that, I think. Uh, um, I think our plan probably will be to get some of the uh, the schoolboy coaches in for uh, for a, like a roundtable discussion. Hear some of their thoughts about the state of the game pre and post COVID. Um, what they think about the uh, the updated balls that they're using, the plastic balls. Who they see as the the new up and comers, um, and where they see the game going. And that should maybe hopefully be in the, in the next couple of weeks. So look out for that. With that, I will, uh, I'll say good night, adieu. Parting is such sweet sorrow. And we hope that you guys enjoyed us getting through the courts. Take care. <laughs>